Hey traders, it's Danielle. Welcome to Monday, May 6th. So today we had quite a bit of a pullback in the market and that set up a little bit of a situation. It's not complete, but it did begin setting up the situation that you may know and love, that I know and love so dearly, which is the short squeeze. So I don't know that I take any more joy in something other than a short squeeze, um, probably because I have been trained as an aggressive directional trader. And nothing gives me more joy than a stock being up 4 or 5% on a day, just blasting off to new highs. So it's something that I look for on a regular basis. Now, one of the most important factors here is going to be the put call ratio. So what that is, is a ratio that tells you how many people are holding puts versus calls. And it basically just tells you the slant of the market. When you're looking at the put call ratio, over the course of the past several weeks, it's been very, very low. That means that most people have been holding calls. And the problem is, is that when so many people are bullish, it can't go, it can't explode higher. So what we need is a drop in the market so people can buy puts so that it will set up a situation where too many people are short. And then inevitably what happens is the market starts to trade higher. And all those people who finally thought they were going to make money on their shorts just get their face ripped off to the upside. And this is what we call the short squeeze. So I did have a little bit of a short today um, in the SPX. I took it off earlier in the day. And then what ended up happening was the... Um, so today, anyhow, you know, the SPX, it gapped down overnight um, and then it started trading higher throughout the day. So essentially what happens is, is when it gaps down, people get short and then, you know, it trades higher because why does it trade higher? Well, because the market is strong. So looking at the overall state of the market, I mean, you have to go back to the daily chart and you have to look at what's actually going on here. And this is an incredibly strong bullish trending chart. So in spite of a Trump tweet or whatever else happens, typically, unless it's some disastrous situation, it's going to hit hold and trade higher, which is what happened today. So in this instance, when we're so close to those previous all time highs, we also have a put call ratio that has gotten bullish. What does that mean? Well, the put call ratio once it gets about above one, particularly up to about 1.2, that's telling you that the market's lopsided to the other direction. That means that people are short. And when they're short and there's a catalyst to trade the market higher, that's usually when they're wrong. And that's usually when the market blasts off even further. Now, I'm not looking right now at this present time for um, the entire market to short squeeze higher because I think it needs a, a little bit more downside and a higher put call ratio. It's possible and we'll watch for it tomorrow, but I'm looking primarily at some of these key names that have very high short interest. So due to the fact that they have high short interest, it's the same concept. Okay. A lot of people are short. They're sitting here hoping that it's going to fail and roll over and die. And when there's a catalyst that proves that the stock isn't going to roll over and die, that's usually when it blasts off. So what I like to do is look for high short interest stocks before earnings. Now, it's very important to understand that we don't ever know if the catalyst is going to pop off. Okay, that's why we wait until after earnings. So what we're looking for is a stock that's very close to the previous all time highs that has an earnings report coming up that could potentially report positively on earnings. Do you see that report last quarter? You see how it broke away and just boom, it went from $28 to $34 a share. Might not seem like a lot, but in the options market, that is a killer trade. So I don't want to cross my fingers too much right here, 
and we don't know what's going to happen. But what I'm looking for in the New York Times is I'm looking for a trade that would break us above 34.85. So what I do is I watch the earnings report. I watch how it opens on the market open. If, if and if, if and only if it breaks above this high with more than twice the market maker expected move. So the market makers are pricing in a move of $1.95. So if and only if this stock has a positive move and it moves up at least $3, that would set up a short squeeze for me. So in that instance, what I would do is I'd come in here and I'd buy some of these very cheap options between $2 and $3. And then I would trade that for about five days for an after earnings move. So it's a very, very short explanation of the setup, um, but there's a couple of them that are setting up. Wing is another high short interest. You have an earnings report. You have uh, you have a price that's very close to that previous all-time high. Then you also have boot. So out of these three, I mean, of course, it's possible that they could, you know, it's possible that the report will be terrible and they'll just roll over and die. But you see this last report, see that move, you see that day, that's just like for day trading, mwah. I mean, how much better do you want? Boom. That's what we're looking for. We don't know if it's going to happen, but have your eyes peeled. And if it happens, that is what I'm going to day trade. Of course, you could come in here and bullishly trade the earnings report and I may just do that, but I'll definitely look for the after earnings report. So thank you very much for joining me for this video. I appreciate all of you and I'll see you in the next video.